On the night of September 16, 2006, three people were found dead in a house fire in Pinion Pines, California. John Hayward, Vicki Friedley, and her daughter Becky had been killed and their home set on fire. Two men have been convicted of the murders, but questions remain about what really happened. Hey everybody, welcome to the True Crime Squad. I'm Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well. How are you doing? I'm good. Spent the better part of the day in my studio uh, designing and making two uh, baby blankets for a cousin whose daughter's having a baby. And nice. Yeah, I'm excited. Excited. Now I'm like, oh, maybe that's what I really want to do is just custom baby blankets. <laughs> you know, that's something new every day. Yeah. Right. Yes, it is. I see well, that. <laughs> our favorite TikTok channel has been down this afternoon. So mm, what does one do? I know. Oh, my gosh. They're back now. Oh, good. Well, they're back now. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Highland Crystals on TikTok. If you have mm -hmm. not watched it, do at your own risk because it is addictive. <laughs> and I call it my new favorite show, even mm -hmm. though it's just a TikTok live stream. Uh, anyway, That's go a check it out. If you guys are seeing these on TikTok, it's one of the ones where they have the big agitating thing full of crystals and people buy a scoop. A, they call it a lucky scoop. And then mm -hmm. they scoop it and they put it in the sifter and they tell you all the things you got. And it's just very exciting. It is. Yeah. It For is. Crystal nerds. It's, this is crystal porn. We cannot look away. It totally is. And mm -hmm. I've watched a whole bunch of them. And I think Kylan Crystals is the best one quality wise. Mm -hmm. And they have the least amount of fake stones. So mm -hmm. anyway. I, I totally feel you. I watched a bunch of different ones today because I couldn't watch that one because yep. they were down and I was very unimpressed. <laughs> right? No. They, these guys have the, they have the best host. They have the cute girl mm -hmm. who always says, Mama Mia. Oh, my lady Gaga. <laughs> yes. So cute and funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, un, uh, unasked for plug, but there you go. Go find them yeah. on TikTok. You won't be sorry. You will not be sorry <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of, well, maybe sorry, not sorry. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It sounds like we have a little O Idaho news. Yes. So let's, I'm going to kick the mic over to you for that. Okay. You know, we've talked about this guy in to infinitum, <laughs> but we're not done yet. Right. This gelatinous bag of rotting fish guts is Craig Rowland. <laughs> Craig Rowland is the... <laughs> I thought you'd like that. It's yeah. A, it's a very great descriptor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Craig Rowland is the now former sheriff of Bingham County, which is a couple of counties away from me. Yeah. Uh, this is Next Blackfoot, Idaho. Yeah. Mm hmm and you guys will probably remember we reported on this when it happened because we've been pretty outraged about it. At Thanksgiving time, a church group uh, from the LDS Church, the Mormon Church, uh, with a leader and several young women in the car, knocked on his door and left a cutout of a turkey on the door. It's a thankful turkey. It was a note to his wife. It had nothing to do with Craig whatsoever. Yeah. It was a note to his wife thanking her for all of the things she had done for them. Yes. Well, for some reason, this enraged Craig Rowland. He ran to the door in, get this, long underwear. Like, what the hell year do you think it is, Craig? Is this anyway, 1921? What the hell, dude? And cowboy boots. <laughs> Really wish there was video of this, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Screaming at his wife to get his gun, which she foolishly does. He runs out to the car, puts his gun in the vehicle with five teenage girls and their leader, and starts screaming at them, waving that gun around. He drags the leader out of the car by her hair, pins her to the hood of the car with a gun to her head, screaming at her about what 
are they doing there and who the hell are they and what do they think they're doing? And she's trying to remind him that they've been neighbors for 30 years and he knows <laughs> her. So, yeah. Is Craig a drinker? Is Craig having some trouble with his memory? Is Craig just flat out crazy? Like, yeah. what the hell, Craig? What the hell? But yeah. regardless, nothing happened for a time. There was no accountability. Then finally, this was investigated and he was charged. Because by God, he should be. Right. And there's been all kinds of weirdness. The uh, Attorney General of Idaho has really urged him to step down, and he's refused to do so. Uh, the local Native American tribes have also recommended he step down after he used this opportunity, this uh, incident as an opportunity to say some very racist things, trying to justify what he did because of the people in the area. Uh, <laughs> right, as though them. anyone had anything to do with his, this but him. But him. Yeah, yeah. tribal council was like... You gotta go, buddy. You need to go. You are yeah. done. He's tried to call it uh, a political smear because the attorney general doesn't like him. Well, I wonder why, Craig. I wonder why. <laughs> Maybe because he's a complete ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the prosecution has been unhappy because his attorney, until last week, was also the prosecutor in another county. Yeah, not a good look. And they said, we feel like that's wrong. And as not too surprising here in Idaho, the judge said it was probably fine. Right. So he allowed him to stay on the case until last week. <laughs> and that attorney actually uh, stepped down. He said, his name is Justin Olison, by the way, uh, the prosecutor at Clark County. Justin Olison uh, filed a motion for withdrawal last week, citing a breakdown in communication between counsel and defendant. Oh, in other <laughs> words, it's just occurred to him that Craig Rowland is a piece of shit. Yeah. Okay, got it. Got it. Yes. Yeah. But Took him a while to get it, mm. Justin Olison. Yes. Justin, you should have never taken this case and you know it. Yeah. Give me a break. Mm -hmm. Your credibility's shot. Ridiculous. Right. But that's fine. That's fine. That's whatever. Now it's in the past because now there's a whole new attorney on board, Dennis P. Wilkinson, uh, who's also going to rue the day he met Roland, is now <laughs> on the job. But guess what happened? He has finally, finally decided to leave the sheriff's office. He has been in law enforcement for 36 years. I'm not sure how long he's been the actual sheriff. It's not nearly that long. No, it's not. I'm not sure how long it is either. But he has finally decided. Here's what he said. Here's what his attorney said. Uh, professional spin doctor, uh, Mr. Wilkinson. <laughs> Craig recognizes that order justice in the county is important. And he did not want to distract from that. I'm sure that's true. It. it Except mm -hmm. for all the time he has distracted from that leading mm -hmm. up to now. Yeah, like, it's only give been me a break. nine months. I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking maybe he's finally seeing the writing on the wall that he did, mm -hmm. in fact, commit a serious mm -hmm. crime and assault someone and mm -hmm. threaten children with a gun. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, you idiot. And that maybe refusing to step down isn't a very good look in this instance. Yeah. But anyway... Ding dong, the dick is gone. Well, for now, <laughs> we'll see what happens. He's out. Yep. Yes, yeah, so, so his trial just keeps getting postponed and postponed yeah. because of all of these attorney problems. And mm -hmm. we yep. just really would like to see some consequences for this completely shitty behavior mm -hmm. that should never, ever be tolerated. No, well, and we'd really like to know what else has he done? Right. Because this one got, they tried to hush this one up. And uh, luckily it didn't happen. But what else has he done? Because you can't tell me this is the only time he's abused his office. You can't. Right. I refuse to believe it. Right. Anyway, there you go. Another one down the road. Well, all we can say is sayonara, sucker. That's right. Well, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you for our main case. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this case was recommended by a listener. So we have to say thank you for that. This is the Pinion Pine, Pinion Pines murders. These murders happened clear back in 2006, but the trials of the men convicted of them just barely wrapped up in the final death. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. It is, there is some controversy and we'll see what's going to happen here because I suspect there are going to be some appeals and I don't know if these guys are going to stay convicted. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But this happened on the night of September 16th, 2006 in Pinion Pines, California. Uh, three people were found dead in a house fire. Mm -hmm. John Hayward and Vicki Friedley, uh, they were like common law, um, you know, married yeah and um vicky's 18 year old daughter becky okay they had been killed and their home set on fire becky herself was actually in a wheelbarrow sort of behind oh. the house and her body had been burned nearly beyond recognition burned so badly that they've never been able to, to determine cause of death uh vicky and john however were shot before the fire started Mm. This was a, you know, a scary, um, horrifying case in the community where this went, where this happened. And things went, there were some suspects, but nothing really happened in this case until 2014. And in 2014, two men were arrested for uh, under suspicion of these murders. Robert Pape and Christian Smith. Robert Pape being an ex-boyfriend of Becky Friedley. Oh. So they were arrested, charged with these murders, and then very quickly released. Uh -huh. And then nothing happened again until 2016 when they were arrested again. This time they did go to trial. In 2018, they went to trial on the murders of John and Vicky, and they were both convicted of first degree murder. Uh -huh. Then just in June, they were uh, convicted again in Becky's death of second degree murder. Wow. Now motive. Maybe it was because of Becky and dating. Um, and you know brave, no longer dating robert and jealousy that kind of thing but they've really never identified what the actual motive was and if if becky was the actual target or if this had to do with vicky and john there were some questions about if there was some meth tra trafficking going on if this was a buy gone wrong or if this generally just was in fact a um jealous boyfriend who got his friend involved to Right. Do this, right? Here are the concerns. And this is really where I'm not I'm not weighing in one way or the other if I think they did it or not. What I am gonna say though is that some of the evidence put forward by the prosecution is kind of terrifying. And honestly, it's rather scary that this is what was considered to be evidence. So this is what the prosecutors presented. There was supposedly a hiking trip planned that would have placed Pape and Smith in Pinion Pines to meet up with Becky the night that this happened. Uh -huh. All of that is hearsay that comes from a friend of Becky's who says they were there when she was on the phone with Robert Pape making the plans. Huh. Okay. There no actual proof that they sh did come to Pinion Pines. Uh -huh. No actual proof that they went on the hike. Nothing. This is just uh -huh. it's hearsay. Um, a tip from Christian Smith's former coworker, who said that he once made a suspicious statement that might have linked him to the murders. Supposedly, he said something to this man like everything went wrong and we just had to burn it all down. Interesting. Okay. However, also hearsay. Uh -huh. Then there are some jail call recordings when Robert Pape is talking to his wife about concealing an unregistered firearm. And it was a 40 caliber 
Glock, Uh which is what they believe the kind of gun that shot Vicki Friedley. Uh Again, they don't have the gun. They don't have any shell casings. All they have is that conversation. Uh Uh, They do have cell phone records. And this is, again, this is so strange. It, the cell phone records show a lack of activity at the time of the murders. Um, at that time, cell service was not great in the Pinion Pines area. Uh-huh. And so they're assuming that meant that Pape and Smith were there and their phones weren't working. That's and evidence. Again, that's not evidence. Oh, that's my God. Conjecture. You, they did not ever actually prove anything. Uh-huh. Uh, there was a business card that was found at the scene and it did have DNA that belonged to Christian Smith. Uh-huh. However, there were two samples of male DNA on Becky's socks. And neither of them were Christian Smith or Robert Pape. Whoa, seriously? Seriously. Holy shit. Uh, and then the only other thing was shoe prints from a pair of vans. And at least one of the suspects owned a pair of vans. Uh-huh. That's their evidence. Wow. Right? So no DNA evidence other than the business card. The business card had his DNA on it. Uh-huh. Then there's other DNA that isn't either one of them. Neither one of them. Yeah. So Holy there are really moly. a lot of questions here um, about how a jury saw that was enough to convict, how a judge saw that was enough to send it to the jury in the first place. Yeah. Because this is all it's hearsay and conjecture. There's no actual, they cannot even place them in Pinion Pines yeah. at the time that these murders occurred. Yeah. The police were very focused on Pape and, and through Pape Christian Smith mm-hmm. um, from the very beginning. Yeah. They did not really look at anyone else. There is Becky's friend who is pointing the finger directly at Pape and Smith. And there's Uh been some people who thought he might have done it and, you know, fobbed it off on these two. Um, There also was a red pickup truck that left the property, nearly had a head on collision with the first fire truck to get to the fire. Uh They've never identified who was driving that truck. Wow. And he was and literally leaving the scene. They convicted on this flimsy they convicted stuff. convicted on this flimsy stuff. Ooh. Three trials. Wow. It's really, really interesting. And I'm not saying they did it or didn't do it. I just think, shouldn't there be more proof than this to convict in first degree and second degree murder? Putting wow. these men away for life. Why isn't there more information like this? Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and we see this all the time. There's this tunnel vision that happens when police, you know, feel like they know who did something. Yeah. And sometimes they forget or just don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think they forget. They just don't investigate other avenues. I mean, they've right. been focused on these men. From the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah. But there's no indication at all that they looked at anyone else. Mm. so it's very strange they have now been convicted of all three and sentenced Mm -hmm. and all the stuff and i would imagine there will be appeals out the yin yang well their attorneys judge their attorneys say that there absolutely will be and you know i mean there always are every time murderers are convicted there always are that's not that unusual Mm -hmm. but i do wonder what an appeals court would think of this evidence Uh, evidence i'm going to mm-hmm. use the mark means air quotes because it's really really flimsy yeah really flimsy yeah and you know there's a a real divide in the community there about whether or not they did it of course um uh smith and pape have lots of family and friends coming out saying what wonderful upstanding citizens they are which you kind of always have that too sure um Pape is a, on, has been an army ranger and mm-hmm. has received two purple hearts. Wow. Um, I don't know. It just, it doesn't quite feel right to me. I don't oh. know if they just need more evidence to show that, yes, in fact, they really did do this. Or are they really on the wrong track? 
Well, and neither of them rolled on the other. No, they did not roll on each other. They really have very minimal because his his DNA was on a business card. I mean, you have business cards. I have business cards. You know, every time you give someone a business card, your DNA is on it. So, right, is that evidence that right. you know that doesn't prove that they were there at that time? Not at all. No, and where there was some a romantic relationship there. It probably wouldn't be that surprising to find some DNA about. Well, but this is from Christian Smith, not Robert Pape. Okay. But still, you know, yeah. he's good friends with Robert Pape. I, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. just, it's a strange one. I really appreciate this one being mentioned to us because yeah, there are a lot of questions here. I just want to have a justice system that convicts people who are for sure guilty. You know, and this exactly. Case, I don't think I can say that they are for sure guilty. I mean, I'm no. not sure how the jury saw this as guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah. Because all of that information that was shared or evidence that was shared isn't, mm -hmm. isn't backed up with proof. Well, and it sucks for everyone. It, it sucks for the men convicted, obviously, and their families, but... This really sucks for the victim's families, too, whether they realize it or not. Right. And maybe right now they feel like they're vindicated and there's justice. They do. But, and they believe that they're guilty. I'm sure right? they do. And, and uh, you know, if I was in their position, I would probably feel the same way. Right. But these, there will be appeals out the yin-yang. These are going to, really these will. cases will be in back in court a billion oh. times. Mm -hmm. To try and sort all of this out. It's not good for anybody. No, it, it isn't. It's not good at all. Um, it's really concerning. You know, yeah. if you're going to convict people of first degree murder and second degree murder, you should probably be 100% sure they really did it. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone is 100% sure they did it. Just like, looking at this. How they could be. Yeah. Right. So we're going to keep an eye on this case. Yeah. And let you know what happens with the appeals and we'll talk about it some more. But I just wanted to open it up so we could talk about it a bit. And I didn't go into all of the detail of the of this story itself, because really what's happening now is what's going to happen in the legal process with these two men. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something to watch because yeah. we have to be really careful about convicting people. Yeah. You know, like. And we like, should all care. We should all care. Because that could be you. That could right. be your family. That could be someone you know that may or may not be guilty of something. Right. We should all care about our justice system working correctly and yeah. not having breakdowns. Right. Yeah. And, and this just does not feel like it worked correctly. No, it doesn't. This feels a lot like this is what the police wanted to be true. This is what the prosecutor's office wanted to be true. But how can they get through with such flimsy hearsay and, you know, you think I don't with a know. different judge, none of that evidence would have made it to the table. Honestly. Right. I, I, it's interesting that they call it evidence because most of it is not evidence at all. Yeah. Like the vans. Oh, someone owns a pair. Well, did you prove that they were the exact pair that made those footprints? No, right. they did not. You know, the, that DNA. Lots of people own vans. Right. Well, and, you know, sh shoes have the soles of shoes will wear differently depending on a person's gait and stuff. So sometimes yeah. even, you know, you can tell that, yes, in fact, these are the same shoes. The same and shoes. Yeah. That wasn't really the done. DNA from someone else, I think is super concerning too. Well, here's the other thing that DNA was never entered into CODIS. So we don't know if that DNA could potentially match some completely different people. Why? There's a lot of really sketchy stuff here. Yeah. People in the community, as I've been reading comments and things, mm -hmm. you know, feel like that the police botched this investigation from the very beginning mm -hmm. and, you know, didn't look at alternatives other than these two men. Mm -hmm. And that there's been a, some shady stuff go on yeah. to ensure that they convict these two men so that, you know, it doesn't shine yeah. a negative light upon the police and the prosecution. Yeah. I don't know if that's actually true, but there are certainly people in the Pinion Pines area that knew this family 
who have very major concerns about the way this has all gone down. Yeah. Yeah. And frankly, so do I. Yeah. It's it's scary to think that mm -hmm. you could be convicted on something that flimsy. Yeah, it is. So we're going to keep an eye on it, see what happens with mm -hmm. the with the appeals. And we will um, report back, you know, and I wish they could just have something a little more definitive. This yeah. reminds me a bit of the Barry Morphew case. I was thinking and the exact same thing. Morphew, you know, mm -hmm. and finally they had to. Um, drop charges. Drop because they didn't have enough. And see, that's what happened back in 2014. They arrested these men and then almost immediately dropped the charges. Right. Because I think they were probably told they do not have enough evidence. Mm -hmm. Somehow they came back with a little bit more, you know, the statement from the guy saying that one of them, you know, sort of said something that maybe was sort of a confession. Right. But again, no one witnessed that. Mm -hmm. That was hearsay. I don't know. So we will keep our eye on this and we will let you know what the courts decide to do with it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And Katie, I think you're going to wrap us up with a little WTF news. Oh, am I? Yeah. You know, yesterday you told us about a judge in West Virginia who had yes. actually pulled a gun on a defense attorney. Yeah. And that that defense attorney tried to get, uh, you know, pull their case off of, or get the judge pulled off of their case, and it didn't work. And that basically it's been a menacing, frightening experience, and that they're just kind of getting away with it. Yes. Well, let me tell you that California is a very different place than West Virginia, if you didn't <laughs> already know. I did have a guess about that. And there's been a bit of an incident this gentleman's name is Tim Scott. He's okay. an attorney. Tim's gotten himself in a bit of hot water. Mm. Using a phrase that happens to be a family favorite, to be honest. But the judge didn't understand what happened. And then when he did, he was very upset. Well, here's what happened. There was... A meeting between the judge and Mr. Scott and two female attorneys. This was, uh, Scott was representing uh, or referring to two female attorneys named uh, Tracy Lagasse and Kimberly Obricht. They represent the San Diego based Metro Metropolitan Transit System. Oh, and okay. he was, was suing them on behalf of someone. Mm -hmm. Well, they had, uh, met in judges' chambers on a Friday, and things had been pretty contentious, apparently. And the, uh, Tim said to the women as they were leaving that he would just like to say to both of them that he'd just see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> the judge, who didn't know what that means, bless his little heart, uh, <laughs> Said, That's his naive little heart. <laughs> How kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, that was not kind at all. <laughs> well, Lagasse did not appreciate that. And felt like, uh, you know, maybe this guy had kind of gotten away with something. So, the next week... I don't know if it was Tuesday or not, but that would be great. Uh, <laughs> had uh, asked for a meeting in chambers to explain to the judge what see you next Tuesday means. And that <laughs> they didn't appreciate that much. Yeah. And wouldn't you know, Mr. Scott immediately lost his case. It was uh, actually uh, called a non-case and dismissed. And is now being referred to the California State Bar for discipline. <laughs> well, good. So judges can pull guns in West Virginia on defense attorneys. But if you say see you next Tuesday to somebody in court uh, in California, you might just lose your job. Yeah, you might. <laughs> and you probably should. 
yeah, bad move there, Tim. He said it was an inside joke between him and someone else in the uh, the, the court's office. Uh, he didn't think that anybody would catch it or understood what that meant, and he was oh, just. Uh, he's, he's the only person that it uses was a bit that of a phrase. Joke. <laughs> yeah, Tim. We'll all have to, you know, see you next Tuesday. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, and I'm saying this really for you know, the John Pryors. The Mark Beans of the world, the Tim Scotts, obviously, mm. don't use that phrase in court. It's just mm -hmm. really a bad look. Yeah. If you want to use it in my living room, that's fine. In court, not happening, especially right. towards two female uh, attorneys. Uh, bad call. Real bad call. He did say he is terribly embarrassed by the whole thing and feels terrible and just didn't realize that it was going to cause such a stir. Oh, didn't he now? He just he thought he was edgier than everyone else. And to be fair. Two women in a very professional setting. A see you next Tuesday. Um, well, he wow. was edgier than the judge. He didn't know. Bless his little heart. He did not know. But. Well, I am glad these women spoke up. They should not have to put up with that crap. Right. Jerk. Do you think after they left, they were like, do you think he meant what I think he meant? And the other one was probably like, did you see the smirk on his face? I'm mm. going to say, yeah, he knew. Yeah. And they went, huh, screw you, Tim. Yeah. We're going to the judge. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Well, good for the judge. And the judge was horrified. Yeah. He didn't just brush it off as, I don't know, locker room talk. You know, he went, yeah. not happening, bro. Yep. Yeah. So there you have it. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. That was fantastic. Yep. As always, I look forward to our WTF uh, segments always because they are good for a laugh. But that yeah. is pretty dang funny. <laughs> well, this has been our Tuesday episode. Mm -hmm. We will be back on Wednesday with another uh, episode as well as Wednesday night for our Case Updates live stream. And we will be back on Thursday night for the Psychic Hour. And the Psychic Hour is... Moving to a subscription uh, service, well, subscription, our um, YouTube membership subscription okay. beginning at the 1st of August. So we will yeah. be talking about that and getting everyone prepared for how to sign up for that. It's yep. very inexpensive. It's just a safety thing we want to do. So it's going to be 99 cents. Mm -hmm. Or if you are already a, a subscribing member um, for the True Crime Cold Read Party, you just get the psychic hour as part of that subscription mm -hmm. so that's coming up we're going to talk about we're it a bunch of live streams. To also gift it to uh, our patrons yeah so we, we i'm thinking there's a way i think i have it figured out so that we can just oh. uh if you're a patron you should also be able to attend uh the psychic hour without an additional cost so we're working on all of that but yep we're, we're going to make it easy as heck we're not trying to make this uh you know, a, a big money making venture on that at all. We no. just need to go behind a paywall for our own safety and yours, honestly. Yep, absolutely. So we'll be doing that. We'll be talking about that on both live streams this week about how we're going to handle that. Yep. And, and make it possible for uh, all of you to still be a part of everything that we do. You bet. So don't forget to like and subscribe, comment and share. Go check us out on Patreon. We have two new episodes coming out on Patreon this week. Um, when you become a patron, you get extra content. There are more than two years worth of content already over there. Mm -hmm. So lots more of us, if that's what yeah. you're looking for, um, mm -hmm. by joining Patreon. And also just helps to support us in doing what we love to do. That's right. So you know it. We are the True Crime Squad. Thanks for being here. Take care. <laughs>